Introduction and Overview Configuring Pseudo Wires End to End Welcome! In this series of videos, I will show you how to solve a common service provider challenge, how to implement a packet based solution that transports TDM circuits from remote sites to a centralized point of presence, or POP, such as a telephone exchange. In this first video, we will cover the Cisco ASR903 router, the Cisco ME3600 24CX Ethernet access switch, the optimal network diagram and IP topology, and clocking and synchronization flow. First, we will deploy a pair of machines, one in the cell site and another at the POP. Then we will configure pseudo wires at both ends to carry the TDM traffic between them. This video describes the steps necessary to deploy an end-to-end -end solution on both ends of the circuit. The ASR903 pre-aggregation router. We have chosen two different products from the Cisco SPAG portfolio to create the solution. They include the Cisco ASR903 router and the ME3600 24CX access platform. The ASR903 router is a flexible, modular, pre-aggregation platform consisting of a pair of redundant route switch processors. Into this router, you can insert up to six interface modules, which offer Ethernet and TDM options. We will install the ASR903 at the POP. The ME3600 24CX multi-service access platform. Next, we will deploy an ME3600 24CX as an access platform using it as the demarcation device for the IP MPLS network and the central interconnection point for the customer traffic. Unlike the ASR903, the ME3600 24CX is a fixed platform, but it still supports a wide range of built-in connectivity, including Ethernet options and TDM interfaces. Network diagram and IP topology. The high-level design we will implement consists of two locations interconnected with an IP MPLS-enabled Ethernet network with a VLAN tag of 100. Note that on the left side, the ME3600 has been deployed at the remote location, as indicated by the cell site icon. It is connected to the equipment in that site using two separate TDM circuits. This node will be known by the host name of RED, and have a loopback address of 192.168.0.2. We have cabled up the first gigabit Ethernet port on host RED to the backhaul network, and we have allocated an IP address of 10.10.0.2/24 to the interface. The ASR903 is deployed at the centralized POP, as indicated by the building icon. It is also connected to the equipment using two separate TDM circuits. These circuits are the terminating end of the same two circuits originating in the remote site. This node will be known by the host name of Blue and have a loopback address of 192.168.0.1. The first slot in host Blue contains a Gigabit Ethernet module. The first port on this interface module, Gigabit Ethernet 0 0 0, has been connected to the backhaul network. We have allocated an IP address of 10.10.0.1/24 to it. For this solution, the customer TDM equipment supports ITU E1 circuits. This configuration will configure E1-based circuits. If your market requires T1, know that T1 configurations are very similar, and any major differences will be highlighted as we proceed. Clocking and synchronization flow. We now need to backhaul two separate TDM circuits, one of them being an unstructured E1 for which we will use a SAT op pseudo wire. The other TDM circuit is two time slots on another E1 for which we will use a SESO PSN pseudo wire. Finally, since we are dealing with synchronous TDM transmissions, we also consider the clocking and synchronization design. Traditionally, when the POP and cell site were connected through a synchronous transmission medium, the clocking would have been mastered by one end of the connection and recovered from the other. Since we are introducing a packet-based transmission medium between the cell site and the POP, we need to transfer frequency synchronization through some other method. For this solution, we will use IEEE 1588 
also known as the Precision Time Protocol, or PTP, version 2. With this technique, the equipment in the POP will now provide the clocking to Blue, the pre-aggregation router. Blue will recover the clock from the TDM circuit. It will then become a 1588 master and provide packet-based synchronization over the backhaul network to Red, which will be configured as a 1588 slave. Red, as a PTP slave, recovers the frequency from the packet stream and uses that frequency to become the clock master for the TDM circuits to the equipment in the remote cell site. Now that we have described the solution to implement, let's take a look at each of the components.